Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Justin the Food Entrepreneur Show. I'm Justin Bizarro. I'm your host. That's B I W Z A W R O. For anyone who's out there, you can find us on Instagram at Justin the Food Entrepreneurs. You can also find us on Spotify or wherever else you grow yourself through podcasts. So I'm going to jump right into it, everyone. We're going to go into a part three with a very special group of guests. I guess there's two of them, so two guests. Um, and one of them has been on two episodes already, so that's kind of exciting. Um, I love these guys. Uh, I've become very close to them all the time I've spent in Nashville, so this episode means a lot to me. I'm almost crying, weirdly. I'm being emotional. And um, they, I've had a lot of fun. I've, I've gained friendship, and so this episode means a lot to me. Um, and like I said, I love these guys. So with that being said, I have Daniel and Rebecca Thomas. Uh, of Beyond Gravy from Nashville, Tennessee. How are you guys doing today? Doing well, Justin. Thank you for asking and having us. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm apparently I'm emotional today, but um, but uh, <laughs> that's I'm doing okay. Well. Yeah, <laughs> so, I'm doing great too. So thank you. Yeah. So let's talk about like this story again. Like we talked about it with Daniel, and we did those two amazing episodes. But you know, we have Rebecca with us. Um, let's let's have Rebecca talk a little bit about her version um, um, because each of us have a little bit of a different story when it comes to our entrepreneurial journey. Um, you know, Rebecca, tell us a little bit about your history, you know, how you grew up, how you met Daniel, and sort of how you guys got into business together. Well, actually, how you ended up in Nashville and, and how you guys ended up not only being a married couple and having two amazing kids, but also... Um, now running a very successful food trailer. Okay. So um, as far as Daniel and I go, um, we we both uh, went to the same high school. We had the same group of friends, but our friends were different groups, if that makes sense. Like everybody within the group was friends with other people within the group, but we weren't all like really good friends. So I knew of Daniel, but I didn't know him. His best friend or one of his best friends was my best friend's cousin. So I knew of him through her cousin. So we were all kind of in the same friend circle, but he was on the opposite side of the circle that I was. <laughs> so um, he... I, this is probably dating me here, but um, I was one of those teenagers who lived in the skating rink. I was there all the time. Anytime I babysat, I spent my money uh, that I earned at the skating rink. <laughs> and uh, my best friend was there with me as well. And I remember one night Daniel was there with his best friend, my best friend's cousin. And he had this stupid red pointy laser the, the kind that you used to see that you would that the teacher would point to something on the board that they wanted you to see or that you put on the floor in the cat chases I mean those stupid red lasers and uh he actually as I was skating around the the rink every time I would go by he would put the laser on me and one time he put the laser on me and it was on my behind and my friend told me and so I rode by him and I was like grow up I can't stand you and I really didn't even know him and I never thought much about it after that until uh, other than he was just some annoying guy that was part of our friend group um uh <laughs> Fast forward probably a few months or so um maybe towards the end of the summer and uh, he, I went to my friend's youth group and Daniel happened to go to youth group that night. Um, kind of a background of my childhood. My parents were, uh, very, um, religious church going, things like that. Uh, and they still are. Um, and my mom was very, very particular about what church I was allowed to go to. I had to go to my home church. I can't, I couldn't go to other churches, um, or their youth groups. And so it, this was a big deal that my mom allowed me to go to my friend's youth group. And when I went to the youth group that night, Daniel happened to be there. And he was going because he was going to be um, leaving for a branch of the military. And so he was basically saying his goodbyes to his friends. And he went and um, 
we ended up uh, after church, after youth group was over, um, the big thing to do was go to one of the local um, fast food joints. Um, it's a it's a West Coast thing. I don't really think they have them here on this this side of the country, but it was Del Taco. And so as a teenager, Del Taco was where you went. And so we were getting ready to go to Del Taco afterwards. And um, and I heard him saying something about cars. And I was like, oh, no, my favorite car is this kind. And he goes, that is a cheesy car. You got to come see what I have. And this is probably going to make me sound really bad. But he, I went out. I saw his car. It was a Mustang. And I was like, okay, yeah, you do have a nice car. I'll give you that, whatever. But I still like mine, uh, the, this kind that I liked. And uh, he's like, well, why don't you ride with me? And that night after I rode with him to Del Taco and we all sat together, um, we've been inseparable ever since. And we just celebrated last month our 22nd wedding anniversary. So um, we've we've been together longer than we haven't yeah. <laughs> actually so um yeah so that's kind of our backstory um uh how did we get started in the business well um we do uh we when we moved here to tennessee we grew up on the west coast so we've always been west coast people and there was a point in our marriage where it was it was we were hitting a low point in our marriage and where we were living was, it just felt stale. It felt like, you know what, we need something new. We need something to maybe get excited about and just something different. So I have always been in the real estate industry. And at that time, I owned a real estate office with a girlfriend of mine back in Oregon. And um, so Daniel and I decided, well, let's move. So we pulled out a map of the United States, literally, and we covered our eyes and we pointed and we uncovered our eyes and we were like, well, Tennessee, we've never lived on that side of the country. We don't really know much about Tennessee, but what the heck, let's do it. So I looked into the school systems. Daniel looked into like the tax um, the tax structure and things like that in the area as far as um, construction goes because that's that's been his background and I went to my business partner and let her know we were moving and we put our house on the market and sold everything with the exception of a few um, personal items of the kids and um, the dog of course he came with us and I towed uh, his car on a trailer and he drove his big work truck packed with our things and we're here in Tennessee and we've been here now, let's see, December was six years. So six and a half years now we've been here and this has been, truly has been the best move mentally, spiritually, relationally. It, nothing about this move has been bad. It has been amazing. Um, so with that being said, we started to go to a church here in Smyrna that our daughter was going to with a, a girlfriend she met at, at, at school. And uh, she goes, Mom, I think you guys will like this church. So we started going. And in the mornings, they had this they had this um, uh, Bible study for, the, for adults that was called Breakfast Blend. And so it, essentially it was like a breakfast buffet. Everybody brought something. It was like a big potluck. And um, one day um, after Daniel learning his dad's recipe of biscuits and gravy, we went ahead and brought the biscuits and gravy to uh, Breakfast Blend. And someone who was there who attended the church uh, is um, is actually a trained chef. He's that's his th that's what he's done. That's his that's his career. And he was asking, who brought this gravy? Who brought these biscuits and gravy? And Daniel kind of was like, well, I did, you know, and he goes, this is restaurant quality. And we were like, oh, okay, cool. That's awesome. Great. And so we kind of didn't, we kind of didn't think much of it, but at the same time, we kind of felt that seed being planted and it just, we start, he start, Daniel started taking biscuits and gravy more places like, um, to a company that he was working at doing estimates. Um, he ended up getting into a training position there and was able to bring things into the office and people 
there um, really liked the biscuits and gravy. And um, he ended up, um, we ended up talking to our friend uh, Alberto, who is the chef, and talking to him a little bit about how maybe we get it out into the community. And he suggested us doing pop-ups. And so we started at our local farmer's market, just we had a 10 by 10 pop-up tent and our, 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 um, our two, uh, chafing dishes and our, uh, steam trays and just started with just biscuits and gravy. And pretty much every week that we were out there, we were selling out, we were getting great, great, uh, feedback from the community and, uh, people saying, Oh, we came out just to see you. And so that was really encouraging. And then once the farmer's market was over, we were like, wait, what are we supposed to do now? I guess that's just maybe something we do in the summertime. And we kind of just let it lie. And the following season, which would have been last year, they changed some of the um, uh, health code requirements to where you could no longer sell any um, hot foods or any foods that weren't prepackaged. And it's it's kind of hard to prepackage the biscuits and gravy and have it be fresh and hot right there for for a customer coming so um the only way really around that was to go in uh, have a food truck or food trailer or open a restaurant we knew we weren't at the point where we wanted to open a restaurant or even could feasibly so um alberto actually had got his own food trailer because he does um he does tacos um and so we asked if we could meet with him and we just picked his brain. We got all kinds of information about trailers and what to look for, what not to look for. And he basically just mentored us through the whole process of getting our trailer. And so we felt like we had the research and all of the information that we needed on a food trailer. And we just went ahead and dove in and really haven't looked back. So um, we've been really successful in our trailer up to this point. We've been able to expand our menu and um, I'm still working full time at my day job. Um, that's going to be that's that's um, going to be ending here next month um, so that I can pursue Beyond Gravy full time alongside Daniel. So we're both really excited about that. So instead of working for the quote unquote man, we get to be the man and <laughs> work for ourselves and make those decisions and those investments in us and our company and our family. So we're, we're excited about it. So I want to talk about the Mustang number one. That's a pretty sweet story. <laughs> <laughs> That's where yeah. I, I, you lost me at Mustang. I'm sorry guys, but, um, <laughs> No, I'm yeah. just kidding. I'm I'm I love that story. I do love Mustangs. I've had uh, a few myself, and um, mm-hmm. I am a Ford guy all the way. Anyway, so there's that. Yep. Um, it is yep. my favorite so car, and yep. um, and so that's pretty cool. I love that story. Um, I love the bravery of you guys coming together as a couple and deciding to move for the betterment of each other and each other's life and taking the risk for each other. I Mm -hmm. think that a lot of couples aren't willing to do that. And so I just want to make note of that. It's one of the things I admire about you guys. It's one of the things that I find so interesting, but I also find why your bond is so strong because you were willing to do that and get out of your environment um, to seek a better environment or seek a new opportunity or change. Uh, You brought your family with you. Your family has found purpose in life there as well, your kids. Um, I know they work very hard on the trailer as well. Um, and they've mm-hmm. had boyfriends and girlfriends that have participated. We talked about it in episode two. And mm-hmm. so I'm mm-hmm. very just impressed by the leadership that you guys have as parents. Okay. And I think that a lot of humans, um, don't lead well in their families and then try to run businesses and then don't lead those businesses very well. So that's not the case here. And I just want to anchor it with the audience. You know, if you want your spouse or whatever to be your business partner um, and you guys really come together as a couple, magical things will happen. It's just a matter of if you you need to resolve things or you need to find purpose together and have the bravery of rediscovery, in my opinion. 
Um, and you both need to be willing to have patience with each other and kindness for sure. <laughs> um, and, and you gotta be, uh, be willing to uh, forgive easily. <laughs> yes, of course. Like that's part of life. I think at this point, the order I get, yeah. the more I realize forgiveness and humans are humans. Um, and the relationships yeah. that don't last are the humans that can't forgive and they build resentments and those resentments become bigger than the good memories, even though in reality they aren't, um, yeah, for a lot exactly. of people. So, yeah. you know, that's part of it. Um, talk to me about Alberto. I know he's probably one of the three people that we discussed before on the episode as we were discussing sort of the questions that I give everyone. Um, and this is for part two but we already recorded a part two the questions that we i've sort of helped you guys prep for this episode but like who are the three humans who have influenced you or impacted you the most in starting this business and let's start with alberto not because maybe he is one of your three i'm not sure but from my standpoint like how did you meet alberto how did all this come into place like how did that whole relationship begin and what kind of impact has he had on you guys um, well, I look at Alberto as really the seed planter. Um, we met him at church. Um, he and his wife and uh, their three children were attending the same church as us. And so just in the different um, Bible study classes that we were in that he was there, of course, you know, you start to meet the people and become friends with them and whatnot. Um, he was all he uh, was um, also a teacher at one of the local high schools here. He was the culinary arts teacher. So he um, so our daughter and our son actually knew of him from school. Our son was actually in his class. Um, and then once he put together that Zach was our son, we kind of talked, started talking a little bit more and, um, uh, because he said he enjoyed having Zach in his class and whatnot. So, um, we met him through church and then what he also used to do is he started doing pop-ups. He started this company, uh, his business called Mission Tacos with the intention of um, giving a percentage of the sales to whichever local nonprofit or um, club group, church, mission, whatever it may be in the community that that, that was in need. And so um, his mission was to donate money to these other community, uh, community outreaches, if you will. And so, um, uh, he did a lot of that with our church where, um, he, after church one day, he would set up everything, his pop-up and the line for his tacos and his food was wrapped around the church and a certain, per, you know, percentage, if not all of it, uh, went to the missions fund at our church. Uh, to help give scholarships to those who wanted to go on the mission trips, but couldn't quite afford it or were maybe short in being able to afford it. So that's kind of where his started and his has just grown in the community since then. Um, um, and so once he got his food truck, he was able to move into the uh, move, move in and move up into a food truck, uh, food trailer. Uh, that's when we were able to really sit down with him and say, hey, we love this idea of what you're doing. Can you give us some more information? You told us you really liked our gravy and that we had something there and that it was restaurant quality. We think we would really like to try and do something with it. And he said, yeah, come come meet me at the local coffee shop and let's talk. Let's chat. I'll give you any information that I have that I can help you with. And with him doing that, Daniel and I have been able to pass that information along to others who have come to us saying, Hey, we just got our food trailer. What are you seeing works for you? What are you, what do you see? Um, uh, what changes would you make if you had to do it this way? And so now it's almost like we're able to talk to those and kind of mentor other people as we've been mentored. So it's, it's, it's kind of like giving back. So that, that's what Alberto, yeah, pay it that's kind of what we're yeah, and that's kind of where he plays into it for me and for us. And Daniel, do you have anything else to piggyback on that as far as Alberto goes? He's awesome. <laughs> he is. He's a great guy. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk. I'm going to, I know I asked the question about the three impactful people. I want to answer that, but I want to actually ask a sub question within this topic. Um, mm -hmm. Now, did you guys like. I mean, how did you, like, 
he really convinced you guys just ba- he tried Daniel's biscuits and gravy and he's like you guys should do a do a pop up which I think talk about God speaking through other people um I think that Absolutely. that's really significant I yeah. think that his mentorship and his positivity um his encouragement and uh his belief in you guys you know the opposite of doubt the opposite of discouragement the thing that often keeps us hold held back as entrepreneurs He instilled Mm -hmm. the opposite in you guys, which I think is amazing. And what's even more amazing, in my opinion, is your willingness to pay it forward, meaning give back. Like, I can't hold on to what I have and I can't grow unless I give back to others who were once in my position. And I think that Mm -hmm. that's huge. Number one, it's servant leadership. Number two, it's in the Bible. Okay, so we know Mm -hmm. this to be true. And we know it to be a universal law, for lack of a better term, that when you grow others from the growth you from based on the growth you received it expands your capacity to grow and i'm going to anchor this for the audience okay if i lift Uh weights and then i suddenly stop for six months and i pick back up weights i still have a higher capacity to lift more than i did before i worked out so if i work out for six months all of a sudden i can do 220 pound deadlift for example I take six months off, I have now the capacity to do 220, where before I achieved 220, my capacity wasn't that. So I want to just anchor this, and everyone's like, what are you talking about? Just this has nothing to do with subject matter. So I'm going to anchor it. I'm going to anchor it this way, is when you grow, you grow your capacity to grow. But when you grow your capacity to grow other people, you become an entrepreneur. Okay, because that ever growing ability to grow yourself and then use it to grow others grows your business, especially if it's the endless pursuit of growth. And it's huge. It's one of those things where I will be honest, um, there are good businesses out there that do very well. But the best businesses in the world are the individuals that understand this universal law, which is I need to grow my capacity to grow, and thus I need to grow the capacity of those around me to grow. Therefore, my growth to both grow and grow others grows. That means that that's what entrepreneurs do. We grow the world around us. We have food in this case that is the solution. It's our vehicle by which we grow people. Um, Mm -hmm. And I love that it's called Mission Tacos for the mission funds or the mission trips. I did not know that. It's interesting in my head. Like Mission Texas is a place and there's tacos there. I think it's Mission Texas. And so I weirdly attached it to that. And um, Mm -hmm. But now I understand that it's for the mission trips so they can go do God's work around around the world Um, or our work, I often say, and everyone's going to get – hate that I say this all the time, but I'm trying to anchor this with everyone in the world right now who listens into every single one of my podcasts. Um, and just for the audience, I'm talking about the Night Dasher, D-A-S-H-O-R, with Justin Bizarro, uh, the Justin Ryan Bizarro Show, and the Centurion Leadership Battalion Show with Justin Bizarro. But God created the trees, we created furniture. It's what is provided to us we are supposed to improve on as angels on this planet. And I think that This mission is exactly that. It's providing a vehicle by which you guys can improve the world. And that's what he did uh, specifically in his brand. He ties it specifically to the mission. But the missions are to improve the world around them. And I also find that great entrepreneurs such as you guys that, you know, are developing so quickly and, and growing so quickly, a lot of it has to do with that ability to grow the world around you. And to positively influence people, including me. You guys are my friends. You guys are are people I talk to, humans I talk to on a regular basis. And you have grown me just by being around you, particularly, you know, your friendship and, um, you know, just the conversations. And um, so I just want to anchor that with you guys. I think it's important. I think it's important that you guys stay on this path um, and the giving back. so who are the other two individuals that are humans that have really helped you guys grow and have had positive impact on your business? So the second one we have on the list is each other because we've, we've had to encourage and, and support each other. And, and like we, we've, it's kind of a balancing act as far as like upcoming events. I'll say what I think we should, 
how much we should prep and she says how much she thinks and we you know figure it out and come up with a compromise and the majority of the time we're you know pretty close to what we needed to be so yeah just just being able to um I don't know that we would be able to grow our business if we didn't each if if each of us didn't support the business if it wasn't something that we believe in so I definitely think that um I mean Daniel is 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 definitely one of the people that I would say has helped to grow our business because um, he has the capacity at, the, at this point, me soon, but he has, he's had the capacity up to this point to be the hands and feet of our business out in the community when I'm not able to, therefore growing it and getting our name out there and talking to people. And he's not afraid to ask anybody and everybody, Hey, do you like biscuits and gravy? Hey, have you ever heard of beyond gravy? Hey, we're going to be here. We'd love for you to come try our food. We'd love to serve you things like that. So he, He's kind of our hands and feet or our public public relations guy, as I <laughs> as I kind of call him. Um, sometimes I'll just be like, oh, my gosh, Daniel, really? And he's like, what? I gave him a card. <laughs> so he's so I mean, t- to me, I mean, he's definitely helped grow our business. Yes, he has an interest in the business. And so he wants to see it grow but i mean he truly wants to see it grow and be fruitful so i i would definitely say he's one of my people that uh, i would say has helped grow our business because without his determination and his perseverance it wouldn't be what it is because we wouldn't give it our all we wouldn't be giving it our all so same thing with rebecca as well with uh like on the social media side she runs all that so all that exposure and all the posts and videos and likes and reels and like we wouldn't have all that momentum and traction going without all her efforts on that end as well awesome so i mean let's talk a little bit about the like you go from a couple to business partners i'm going to latch onto this question a little bit and extend it what have you learned or admire now most about each other i mean we talked about skills but what has your respect for each other changed and has like the or should i say it grown and love for each other grown and in what ways because i think you discover new things about each other when you do this um for me, I would say, you know, there's always, well, I shouldn't say always, but I know in our relationship and many relationships that I know of, there's always been that quote unquote honey do list. So, you know, honey, I need you to do this while I'm gone at the grocery store, or while I'm gone at the office or whatever. Um, and it seems like he has now taken that honey do list and made it an, a. Uh, 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 a we need to do list and he just has taken that and run and he has owned and taken ownership of every single thing that he gets done on that list whether it's tinkering on the trailer or going and meeting new new businesses to to meet uh or to be able to uh set up in their parking lot or find out about local events that are happening or or um talking with people just about our business in general and so I have a newfound respect for him with regards to our honeydew list um, because he's just taken it and just owned it. And he is checking things off and adding extra things to it, even when he's tired. And so for me, it's like, wow, he's 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 taking this on and he's really doing it. Um, and it, so for me, it, it, it's a newfound respect for this for for this side of him because it it is a new business side of him that I've never really seen before because we've not ever been in business like this before. We've had construction businesses and stuff, but that was on a much different scale. So seeing him in this capacity and just taking full ownership and, and, um, and pride of ownership in this business, I've just, that's just something that I've, I've, I've learned to love even more about him. So 
I don't know if that made any sense, but I know what I'm saying. (laughs) It absolutely makes sense. And I agree. I I love that you said that it's just so perfect. Um, And I actually can see that in Daniel, honestly. And I can actually, in the five, now almost six months I've known you guys, I've seen him grow in a lot of ways in that what I will call entrepreneurial ingenuity. Like, he is able to now start seeing things and visualize and manifest things and knows how to break them into steps, which you call it a honeydew list, um, which is obviously a common phrase, but in a way that brings your business forward. And I think that that's really a big deal. Um, How about you, Daniel? Yeah, I I, I guess more respect and love for Rebecca for... Uh, I guess, I mean, she's always been awesome and like dedicated. Like when she tackles something and wants to, to do it, it, like it, it always gets seen through to the end, but it's with this business, it's even, it's, it's even more like it's, it's a stronger like sense of urgency with it or something like just like uh, the drive to have everything done and done right and you know have have everything sparkly and clean and and just in its spot and where it needs to be because because when you're in the middle of a rush and you go to grab a spatula to scrape something out and it's not where it's supposed to be then like you know what are you going to (laughs) do so it's I, I guess previously I didn't have as much uh, appreciation for things being in their in their uh, appropriate place, and uh, yeah, that's a, a definite good bonus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. I agree with you in a lot of ways. Like when it's at home, you can it's a little bit different than when you're trying to run a business. You have the pressure of clients. You're you're now in it. You've got skin in the game. You're. Uh, you're trying to profit, um, but you're also trying to take care of each other and your family. So being set up to succeed, I think, in the way that Rebecca does it for you, I will call it set up to succeed because that's what I see. She alley-oops you the ball so you can dunk and, yeah. um, you know, things like that. So the um, the progress that you guys have made over the last few months and in six months, like I said, it's just been phenomenal since I have met you guys. And I think it's pretty incredible that that is going on. And so, um, let me ask the next question. Like, well, we're, we, we still have, we still have one person left on our list for okay. helping our business grow. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the third main human, um, we actually, um, both of us are in 100% agreement on this is you. Um, prior to prior to knowing you and getting to talk with you and just glean off of your knowledge, we didn't know any of this. And we were kind of just, we were running with it, but we were running in all the different directions. You have, you have yeah, like narrowed our path for us and kind of guided us along, along the way and given us new ideas and new, and new um, inspirations. And you have given us um, confidence in our business that we can grow this into something fantastic. So you are our, our, are our third main person. So thank you, Justin. (laughs) Thank you guys. I appreciate that very much. I'm going to take a moment to receive that just because I can be, I'm not good at receiving things. I'm a much better giver than I am a taker for sure. Um, It's a little uncomfortable for me, but I appreciate that. Um, It's obviously why I do it to grow the humans around me, but um, um, being recognized for it's a little bit hard for me because I don't I'm I want to stay humble I think is part of it and I just don't know how to receive uh, compliments and stuff like that so um, to be frank it's just not been in my history or the way I grew up so um, but I appreciate that guys and I appreciate you guys doing that and I and I um, it means a lot more than you know uh, so I appreciate that 
I do work hard at it. I do work hard to give everyone around me um, more than I've had and more support than I've had and belief because I think as entrepreneurs, we don't have enough people rooting for us and we don't have communities rooting for us. And that's also the reason, as you guys have seen, I've started Gorilla Brave, which is that Mm -hmm. entrepreneur group for food entrepreneurs uh, in the community because I do believe that there is an elite group of food entrepreneurs that has nothing to do with how much money you've made. You've run successful businesses based on uh, core values and off a purpose and spreading positivity. And you guys do that. Um, You do that all the time. And um, it's really cool how you guys come together in that way. And it's really cool that you guys have built this. So one of the things I want to talk about, uh, Rebecca and and Daniel is the pig rolls. Okay, like I love the pig pens. I love the sausage and gravy, um, and I love the biscuits and gravy. Those are all my favorites. Like I get all those things, but I have really fallen in love with your pig rolls and like the concepts <laughs> that you're developing around the pig rolls and what those mean yeah. for you guys as a business. So can we talk about this story? How I mean, we've talked about it a little bit in the previous episodes, but I think right now where you guys are, it's worth talking about them specifically because and how you guys created them, what they are, some of the ideas you guys have for expansion along those lines, and um, and just what that means for you guys, how you created this thing that is so unique to you guys um, that I really, no matter how someone hard someone tries, they'll never imitate it. Um, I'm serious about that. You guys have something that's unique to you, and it's pretty incredible. So tell me a little bit about those. So I worked at a little restaurant back in Oregon, and they had uh, similar rolls, had different fillings. Uh, had like pinto beans or, or cheese and or meat or chicken. And so, uh, you know, I made them there. And once we had, we had moved here, I was like kind of missed them. And I was like, well, I made some of the, like something similar to one of the chicken ones like we used to make. And we made some for friends and vacuum sealed them and they took them and like air fried them. And a lot of people love those. And yeah. we were just kind of thinking about menu expansion. And it was like, well, we could do some sort of like little handheld food and just put the bacon and the sausage and cheese in there and roll it, ra- yeah. roll it up and then you know, dip, have serve it with a side of gravy to dip it in, and we tried it out, and like all, all the f- first few people that tried the first batch were like, "That is really good." So, I actually was the last one to try them, <laughs> not because I don't. I, I'm a firm believer in trying your product, but um, I. I just didn't, I hadn't tried them yet. And so finally at one of our events, I was like, I'm hungry. I think we we have a little bit of a lull. I'm just going to go ahead. Why don't you make me up a pig roll? I want to try it. And so he made it for me and I was like, okay, I want the full experience. Give me our little cup for dipping uh, into the gravy. I got to have that. And it's almost like the how I remember your reaction, Justin, to trying the pig rolls the first time is pretty much how my reaction was. I said, this is what I've been missing. This is what you made. And this is what everybody is loving. This is amazing. This is like so good. It's my favorite. Oh my gosh. And I just, I ate that thing so fast and, um, it's everybody just, everybody loves it. And then it's, I just always think about, I just always think about your reaction when you first tried it, like the look on your face, because we never can see what our faces look like to others, but we can feel our expressions. And I just remember that expression, you're, you, I was like, yep, that's how I felt. I loved them the first time I tried them. So, so yeah, I, um, I was the, I, I was a little late to the party on them. (laughs) So, but they're, yeah, I love them. They are so good. Yeah, she's like, these are really good. Like, yeah, duh. <laughs> he just, he said duh you. to me. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, duh, I've been telling you. <laughs> uh, it's like that damn laser thing he had before. What the heck is that thing? <laughs> Who knew that thing would lead to such geniusness and like a relationship, you know, the for, the right? force, the forethought and uh, the <laughs> flirting with life there. Um, 
like yeah. totally like I did not I mean I'll be I'll be honest I was like what is this and like come on like pig roll what kind of name like I just had all these like set pre ideas in my head of or things that I tried that look similar and I just yeah. don't even know how to explain the flavor explosion like they are incredible like I can You could see, see the flavor explosion in your expression on your face and the way your eyes lit up and it's it's like we could see you it's like your your, your facial expression was totally telling us the story of how you were processing the flavors and what was going on and what you were tasting and the consistency and the texture and it, i mean it was just how it how to see the look on your face when you tried them i totally got it because that's how i felt when i tried them and i'll never forget that that night when you tried them and cuz daniel and i talked about it after that we're like oh my gosh did you see he loved the big rolls that was totally awesome they're totally good <laughs> This guy knows what he's talking about because we had literally just met you. And we're like, this guy knows what he's talking about when it comes to food. And he really liked them. Oh, my gosh. This, <laughs> so, is, awesome. this is awesome. And so it was. Yeah. And we've talked about it. I mean, keeping things simple, having a staple item that you're known for. Um, like it weirdly, like Daniel and I were just talking about it, like before that night. And I had gone down and visited you guys once and had the sausage or the biscuits and gravy. And then after that, I was like, okay, you guys invited me back down. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I don't have anything better to do. Um, you know, and being by myself all the time in my recording schedule and work schedule and all of that stuff at the time, I have no, I didn't really have time for socializing so i was like okay like i would love to come by and try it and daniel's like okay try this thing that we talked about and i don't i don't know how to describe it but it's very rare in business that we like strike gold okay but it doesn't strike we don't realize that we've hit a vein of gold usually when we strike it we just get a glimmer maybe it's a few flakes okay and this product hit my mouth and i'm like oh my gosh like the, the the gravy is the flakes. The the biscuits are the flakes. But this thing is the gold vein. You know, the one that you're hoping to hit that's just full of gold. And I don't mean it only from a financial standpoint. I mean it from the culinary creativity, weirdly. The, the idea to be different. The idea where this can be more. You know, there could be a steak and cheese option, like a breakfast steak. There could be... You know, a country fried chicken option, a breakfast option in there. There could be so many different things that also encompass breakfast or tradition in the way that you guys do it or it's true to Daniel. Because I don't like with having no culinary background um, really other than doing what he's doing. I am totally like blown away that he was able to create such a flavor profile or you guys were able to create mm -hmm. such a flavor profile. I'm not sure how it originated, but that kind of flavor profile where it literally layers its way across your tongue. I don't know how to describe it, but there's more flavor coming from it always. And like they were so piping hot. I think I could not get them down fast enough. Um, they were so good and I and I will like every time I get a chance to go there and have them I do have them I will tell everyone that I am willing to pay more than they're charging for them that's how good they are which means they're probably undercharging for them but you got to get people to like them so I understand right now but one day people are going to line up for those things and the possibility to go in desserts uh, the possibility mm -hmm. to smother them the possibility mm -hmm. to take them on the road and just dip them in different types of sauces or gravies because um, obviously yeah. you're a gravy um, business. You know, there's lots of things there, you know, that I think have so much potential. And anyone who's listening in, you need to go try this. OK, if you're in Nashville, you need to hunt down the Beyond Gravy trailer and you need to try these. And if you're doing event or catering, you need to have them there and have this as one of your options. This type of finger food is enormous. I know you guys have done weddings before. We talked a little bit about it offline. Mm -hmm. But like this type of thing, I think with a menu and, and an easy handheld food where the world has become, excuse me, is becoming more mobile. Now I got the hiccups out of nowhere but okay and um part of being a podcaster just roll with it 
and um, mm -hmm. part of being an entrepreneur also actually and but I think you have something and I'm interesting to see what you guys create because I think there's a lot of different variations of this like the other day when I was I was actually I talk about your pig rolls like with the people around me and my cousins and all that <laughs> like awesome. it's a weird thing that sticks like because I truly believe in the product and it's so unique um and it's so original like that's the other thing like it's even though it's stemmed from other ideas and food like we tweak things to create our own okay well i'm going to take out that much salt and add in garlic and now it's my recipe okay it's that easy and if you ever trademark a recipe uh or use confidentiality you'll understand that all a person has to do is change one ingredient and it's no longer yours so um, that's the weird thing about food and recipes, just as I've learned the business over the years, especially in healthcare, where we develop really great recipes, but then someone tweaks a minor thing and it becomes theirs and they can steal it from you that easily. So this is yeah. something that I think is non-replicable. You could even give them the recipe. It's not going to happen, not with the heart, not with the love, not with even the way that you guys do it. It would never happen. I'm not saying to do that. This is like your secret sauce. You know, this is where Coca-Cola locks up its formula, even though it's different from its original formula. But wherever you guys go, whatever you develop, it's important. So I'm talking to my cousins about this, and I'm talking to them about the um, this this show and um and preparing for it yesterday and i'm talking about the pig rolls and i'm trying to describe it to them in the way that it works and one of the things that we talked about is like all and they work in bakeries okay and they were talking about like the different fillings like you could even do like cream cheese and and strawberry preserves like you're getting your toast with your biscuits and gravy and it's all wrapped up into one and i'll just say that out loud now everyone heard it on the podcast but this is what i'm talking about these things are a delivery vehicle for yumminess i don't even know how to describe it i've even like <laughs> like maybe the name should be pig rolls and gravy because i'm just like it's so true to what you guys have done and it's so unique uh that i think that there's so much there I can't stop thinking about them. That it's one of those things where that's very rare. Like there's every once in a while, like I love hamburgers and fried chicken, even though I don't eat much fried chicken anymore, unless it's um, healthier and in the ways that it's cooked and stuff like that. But um, but one of the things that is true is that you guys have something that's that's true to you guys, and you're so far ahead on the curb on this that I think that you'll make something amazing um, in the future. So what other ideas have you guys had to expand your pig roll selection? Um, I was actually just, uh, da because Daniel and I have been talking about this for a while, especially with um, s some new directions and more directions that we may be going with our business. Um talking about our pig rolls and kind of some other flavors and, and flavor profiles and things. I was, I love a, a good Monte Cristo. <laughs> and so I told Daniel that it would be awesome if we could somehow make our pig roll, but with the idea of like a Monte Cristo kind of taste and flavoring and ingredients. And maybe instead of using the gravy for dipping, use the, the, the jelly and, uh, you know, dust it with, um, powdered sugar. And so it would still have, it would have that sweet, but that savory and excuse me, serve, um, gravy on the side if you wanted that option as well. So that's, that's kind of one of them I've been thinking of, but, um, and then also, of course, like a, a vegetarian uh, option would be a very good. We want to do that. To... Yeah, uh, uh, like a vegetarian option because we have we've had people ask us, "Do you have any any vegetarian items?" And we've actually made our gravy in vegetarian form for um, some friends of ours, and they loved it. We tasted it, and it tasted pretty much the exact same. So yeah. um, that's something that we'll be looking into as well when we have more capacity. Uh, for that uh, right now we're just we're limited in our capacity to our trailer so we we kind of have to really pick and choose and right now we're good at the gravy that we make so we're sticking with that if that makes sense 
Um, but once we have more capacity, we'll be able to expand on that. But um, yeah, so tons of different flavors. So a vegetarian option. Um, I like that kind of Monte Cristo breakfast vibe with it. Um, um, I, I would love to. I, one of my favorite sandwiches is a Philly cheesesteak. So I that's something I want to do as a, a Philly a Philly roll of some sort. Yeah. Thing with some sort of cheese dipping sauce or something. I'm not sure on that yet, but yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of playing around with different ideas. Um, uh, like, a, a, a spicy or, um, uh, heated version. Um, we, we've got, uh, we've got a friend who, uh, makes all his own sauces and salsas and, uh, we've kind of tried some of his sauces to see if we could incorporate the use of one of those in, a in a more heated version of the pig roll. Um, so yeah, we're we're playing around with it. We've got a list of uh, of them that we that we would like to try. Um, so it's definitely something that we've been we've been thinking about. We did try, we tried a, a dessert one also. Um, it had some fruit inside, and and uh, we made our own. And by we, I mean Daniel. <laughs> I'm the cleanup crew. He's the, the, the cook in all of this. <laughs> he, uh, he made, he made, um, the icing for it for dipping. And so just trying different things. We've been having family members try it and kids try it and, and all of that. So, um, yeah, it's been, it, it's definitely something that we've been looking to expand on and it, it and it all looks and uh, it looks and tastes good in, in my mind at what I'm seeing on paper. So we're just looking to see that to fruition and actually be able to serve that to the, to the community. So. What's your guys' favorite thing on the truck? I mean, what's the favorite thing that you guys have done? What's your favorite thing to eat? Like, tell me about that. Uh, so my favorite thing on the truck, um, food wise trailer. Food sorry. Wise. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, my favorite thing on the, on the trailer, as far as food goes are the pig rolls, because like you said, they're easy, they're handheld they're Um, and they're just the right amount of food if I'm not too hungry or if I am super hungry. Um, it's just like the right amount to fill me up. Um, but I would say like my best memory or my best, um, my best, I don't know, on the trailer, we've had a lot of customers that have come to us while we're up in the trailer. Um, but by far, uh, the best thing has been, there's a little boy at a location that we frequent and there's a little boy, his name is Jax and he's absolutely adorable. And he has his mom come over every single time we're there. And he says, mommy, I want the piggy rolls. Mommy, I want the piggy rolls. And so she comes over and orders the pig rolls. And even though he can only eat one, because he's a little boy, he's like four, um, he specifically asks for them. And whenever I hand him out the window to him, he has the biggest smile on his face. And she's always thankful and says, great, awesome. Now I get to eat the second one too. <laughs> so she's excited because she gets to eat one. Um, but I just love, I love meeting the new people on the trailer and then actually getting to see those people come to different events because they actually sought us out like hey we've been following your schedule we saw that you're near us and we had to come down here tonight for dinner or we had to come after church and get some something to eat after after our uh, midweek gathering or you know wh whatever it may be and so just seeing jacks and his sheer excitement for the pig rolls and 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 love to get those all the time and then um of course i like to eat the pig rolls and um just in general the time that daniel and i have been able to spend together on the trailer because it's not always you know roses and i don't know unicorns roses and unicorns and 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 happy times it's it's a lot of hard work and hey you're on my side of the line get back on your side you're hogging up my space here this is my area that is your area stay over there and then looking at each other with that look and that, that we just want to like ah and then looking back at each other and giving each other a kiss like okay we made it through that rush that was great so just just that extra time that we've been able to spend together and 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 work in a different way together because 
we've got the parenting thing down. I mean, we've worked as parents together for 20 years, almost 21 years. We've worked as a husband and wife together and as, as cohabitors together and doggy parents together, but we've never really worked as business owners together. And so to be able to add that to how we work, it's just been it's been a great experience. So those are, those are my favorite memories or favorite things about the trailer. So, and I talk a lot, sorry. So what's yours, baby? <laughs> uh, one of my, a recent good memory, uh, we did uh, Nashville cars and coffee and just, it was an awesome event just to see operations go so smoothly. Like this, all, all the hard work and everything we've done and all the things we've learned, it just kind of was like the culmination because people would come up, they would put their order in and they would either get the receipt or their change. And uh, Sam would tell them to go to the next window and they would slide to the next window and they had their food sitting there ready. And it was just like a, it was like a well-oiled machine. And it just, it kind of made me uh, just happy and proud to like just, to see it working so well like it was it was a it was a good day we've definitely been able to work the kinks out so yeah it's always a learning process don't get me wrong there's always something that we're like oh i think next time we should try that but yeah. from where we were a year ago in the trailer to where we are now so i think one of the greatest lessons or the the things the takeaways that you guys have had is teamwork i think that over the last year, you guys talk about all the events, the the sort of getting into unison. It's almost like when you're watching soccer and they string together like 30 passes before they score a goal, and you're like, holy crap, that was magical. And you're starting to feel that momentum with your kids, uh, with your your skills, with what you're trying to do um, for the sh- uh, for your trailer to grow your business. You know, we're we're eventually going to talk about growing into a brick and mortar and what that looks like and all the things that you guys are working on. So I'm very excited about all of that. Um, You know, and the other thing I want to say is just on the pig rolls, like there's so many ideas. Like I said, there's like, you guys talked about a Monte Cristo and a vegetarian. I just think there's endless possibilities there, you know, whether it's like a chicken fajita roll or a chicken cordon bleu or, you know, a deconstructed like eggs Benedict uh, that you dip in hollandaise Mm -hmm. sauce. You know, there's like, Mm-hmm. So many things that are endless there that you guys have really got something. So yeah, when it comes to memories on the trailer, I love that we talked about it. And one of the reasons I ask this question now is because I find a lot of the time when, when entrepreneurs and, and individuals or couples or business partners are at their lowest, they need something to anchor themselves to. You know, they need to go back to the good memories and successful relationships, successful couples, successful business partners have the ability to go back to the hard times or the good times at the beginning to build off of, you know, and the the good times. And I think that that's hugely important for what you guys are doing and how Mm -hmm. you guys have built this business. Um, I'm definitely going to have you guys on another part four. We're going to have to schedule it because I have like three or four actually five more questions for you guys and um but i just want to keep the audience going i've got a lot of things like going on in the background here suddenly and um i'm trying to concentrate and um work through this but um but i find people don't understand our and respect our schedules sometimes so there's always that um the um the thing I will say to you guys and the question that I have, the last question I have, not including that more, the five I have and the extra that I have is where, where are you hoping this goes? Like where does your dreams, like you guys are starting to manifest things. You're starting to get into reality. Um, you know, it's starting to sink in that you're actually food entrepreneurs. Like where are you hoping this goes? Um, I'm not really sure how much we could say. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah what are your dreams What? Are, how far do you want this to go if you were to think really big and dream really big where would it be uh, like, I, I would say 
Um, I would say for me, I would love to see something. I would love to see something of ours or something of Beyond Gravies in the in a store somewhere, like so that it's it's almost like, hey, do you see that label on that? I know that label. Oh my gosh, look, look what we've done. Look what all of our labors and our our hard work and our determination and our blood, our sweat and our tears and our laughter and our ideas and all the people around us who have supported us and encouraged us. Look what it's done. Look, there is our label in this grocery store. So whether it be like our gravy or because our pig rolls are so well received by people, maybe it's our pig rolls. I, I don't know, but I would love to see something big like that just out there and available to people beyond just the Nashville area because I mean I do think we have a really good product and we have had people say that they really enjoy our food so I would love to be able to expand that to others not in the Nashville area who otherwise wouldn't be able to try it unless they were tourists here um, since this is primarily where we're based out of so I think it would be awesome to see something like that in a store or, you know, I don't know, just see your name out there in a, a on a much larger scale. So to me, that would be exciting. Um, yeah. And yeah. I, I would, uh, at some point, it would be awesome to have multiple brick and mortar locations and have a more permanent presence than in the trailer, just, you know, being in random spots and whatnot so that that would be uh that would be a, yeah. a, a vision for me yeah i mean i think you guys are on the right path you're starting to think big you're starting to dream bigger um and i think i 100 percent agree i think you have a product that could go into stores uh it could be a consumer package good that people could buy at the grocery store or order online and ship to them through services like gold belly I also think that you guys have a product and a product line that could be brick and mortar. Um, we've talked a lot about different concepts and growing your business. I think there's multiple options out there that you guys are exploring, which I think is spot on. Um, and we've mm -hmm. talked a lot about those offline and not on the podcast. And, um, and I think that what you guys are able to do or able to grow with your brand. And again, anyone who's in Nashville or anyone who's listening in or anyone who's going one of the 21 million people that are going to Nashville for tourism this year, you need to seek this out and try this. It is a very unique company. It's a very unique food trailer and there's products, including the pig pen, which we didn't discuss, but because I got it so wrapped up in the pig rolls <laughs> that are just very good. They're very unique, and I, I'm interested to see where you guys take this. And I agree, there's spice, and there's things, and we, you know, there's barbecue chicken pig rolls, and you know, there's 10 million different things that you guys could do that's true to the South or true to yourselves. Pizza pig rolls, you know, all sorts of things that I don't know if it'll work. I'm just spitballing because I like doing that, <laughs> but I'm also showing the audience and demonstrating like ideas are that are that way you just got to write down you got to think what comes to mind you got to weigh them out you got to figure out if they're a good idea for your business or not um where can they find you guys online uh you can go to beyondgravy.com um you can see pictures of our food there our menu all of that you can find us on facebook at beyond gravy or you can find us on instagram at uh, beyond underscore gravy um, you can also find us if you're familiar with street food finder, um, you can find us on that at street food finder. And then of course, beyond gravy, it'll show our detailed schedule of where we're at every location, the time, whether or not we have online ordering turned on or pre-orders. Um, so yeah, you can find us in any of those four locations. Yeah, that's pretty, um, spot on i recommend everyone go look at it. i recommend you guys follow them on on instagram you guys are starting to get better you're starting to explore reels i like this you're starting to explore getting more pictures and stuff of your food out there i think that that's an important thing we're going to talk about that a lot more in the next episode i'm going to get you guys back on as soon as possible because i i have stuff that i want to anchor for the audience and i want to 
want to help promote for you guys um, and attract people to what you're doing uh, for sure. So one, I want to just say thank you to you guys. One, for your friendships. Uh, two, for coming on the show. And three, for your belief in each other. Um, you inspire me and you you give me a lot of hope in relationships and in business, uh, even though I've done um, business and been a successful entrepreneur in many ways. And um, that there is partnerships out there. There is a uh, unified purpose in business. There are shared visions and goals in life that really matter. And when you're a couple and you guys run in parallel and you're all rowing in the same direction and believe in the same vision and have the same goals, you can really accomplish a lot. Um, and you can really grow quickly. And I know that you guys don't always see it, but since I've known you just the last six months, your business has grown immensely. You guys as entrepreneurs have grown immensely. And it's just an incredible thing. Um, and patience and um, business ac acclimate, you know, all of those things just keep growing. And it's just hugely impressive. I'm glad I get to be a fan. I'm glad I get to root for you guys. And I'm glad I get to watch on the sidelines and, and sometimes come into the game and help here and there for sure. Um, but it's more or less that um, I'm really impressed with what you're doing and I'm really impressed with your concept. And I know there's a lot of individuals around me who I've introduced you guys to that are very impressed with what you guys are doing too. And like I said, when I mentioned the pig rolls to everyone and they see my excitement and that fact that I can't even describe them because there's so much flavor burst, you see that other people are like, word of mouth, how do I get this? When is it coming to New York? When is it coming to New York? That's the, the question I get all the time now. When is that? When are they coming to New York? Because I'll just be randomly around. I'm like, I could, I would really love some of that that pig roll with gravy right now. Like it's just like <laughs> it sticks in my head, and it's rare because hamburger or cheeseburgers are really the only thing other thing that does that to me. So that's quite a statement. I'm a fan awesome. of basic food. Thank you. Awesome. Um, thank you. Thank you guys. And. Um, the audience, I apologize about. We had a little bit of background noise there. Um, I have, for whatever reason, people are coming in and out of the other room in the studio, um, even though the light's on. But that's okay. We'll work through that. So um, <laughs> as an entrepreneur, I've learned to deal with chaos always. Um, and people are in their own world always. And so it's a matter of being able to relate to them, understand them, knowing that they're just trying to do their job or do whatever, sometimes be supportive. But I think um, I'm going to anchor this as we close the episode as my last point is that life does throw curveballs, uh, but life is looking for you to take action. Okay, God wants you to plant seeds. It's your job to grow them. And what you guys did by pivoting the way that you did to move to Nashville, to then create your own business, like all of that happened because you had the bravery and belief in each other to move your family to a new place. And most people don't realize this, but if the flower no longer grows in its environment, it's not the flower's fault. It's the environment. And you need to change the environment for you, there to be growth. I have experienced this myself. I've had periods where I didn't grow. And when you're not growing, you're dying. There is no stagnation. And when you don't change your environment, you le it could lead to misery and suffering and sadness and depression. We often get all of those things, but we aren't doing what we need to change our environment. I'm not always saying you need to pick up and move somewhere but maybe you need different friends. Maybe you need to get involved in an entrepreneur group. Maybe you need to just get involved in a group of some sort that has similar principles to you, okay? And that's the last thing I'm going to leave everyone with is we often chase personalities, people that are like us, look like us, talk like us, are like us. But the reality is, is for us to grow, for us to be the flower that grows in a positive environment, we have to go expose ourselves to other people that have similar principles, okay? Forget about the personalities. Forget about whether we look the same, we have the same things, we believe in the same religion, we go to the same church, we go to whatever. What are the people around us that have the same principles in, in life, okay? Alberto is a great example of this for you guys. 
he had the same principles. And when it came to business mind, he had the same principles because whether you guys were knowing it yet when it happened, you guys have that growth mindset. You have the the wanting the pursuit of happiness in the form of the pursuit and joy as an entrepreneur. I always say that entrepreneurial ingenuity leads to a lot of joy in our life. If we choose it, we get to do things that no one else gets to do. And yes, it's hard. And yes, it can be sad. And yes, it can be emotional. But at the end of the day, when we look backwards, we tend to remember the memories, not the bad things. We tend to remember the wins as it should be. And we tend to not remember the bad things because they were learning opportunities. And we're going to talk a lot about this on the next episode with you guys is all the fucking growing opportunities that that you guys have had, as I call it, AFCO, like ha- another growing opportunity. You know, you can throw the F word in there again. I won't repeat it since I did it once. But for me, I have to put the F word in there to emphasize that I need to grow. This is a, like if I don't grow... I die. And if I'm not growing in my environment, I need to see what's around me and change my environment. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And you guys did that boldly, and it has led to a business, a business that's going to be a legacy for your children. Um, and I've seen them take interest in it as well. And we're going to talk about that as well in the next episode and how much they have grown as a result of you guys being entrepreneurs already. I've seen that as well. Um, particularly in your daughter. I don't. I haven't met your son yet, but I've met your daughter a few times, and she's quite the entrepreneur herself. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah. so, yes, she is. <laughs> so that's something I want to discuss on the next episode. So thank you guys for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank you guys in the Bye. audience for listening in. If you guys like what Beyond Gravy, Rebecca and Daniel Thomas had to say, share this episode, give it five stars. I know the last time Daniel blasted out his episodes, they went, they climbed in downloads so quickly. I was blown away. It was like instantly. And um, even though we do very well with the release of every episode, I've never quite seen anything like that and the support that you guys got from your episodes. So I just want to say also that I was very um, impressed by the support by you guys. It means that you guys have lived a good life. You guys have been good to the humans around you for them to show that type of support of you guys. Um, so thank you everyone for listening in. You can find us on Spotify or wherever else you grow yourself through podcasts and we're out.